Good morning, it's Thursday, December 10th, and this is the Herald Review's newest podcast, The Daily Chirp. We're excited to bring you a closer look at one of our top stories, events in the community, local history, sports, and more. Today, we're focused on a coupon booklet worth $6 that could help change a homeless person's life. But first, a quick message from our sponsor. Hi everyone, I'm Sean Lawley from the Lawley Automotive Group, and we've stocked up on inventory at all of our dealerships. If you've been thinking about a new car, we've got the deal for you on a new Buick, GMC, Chevrolet, Ford, Kia, Hyundai, Honda, Nissan, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. You don't have to go to Tucson or Phoenix to buy a new vehicle. We're your hometown dealer since 1995. We'll beat the big city dealers in price, and our customer service is small town dealer friendly. Come into any one of the Lawley dealerships today, or shop lollycars.com and see why nobody beats a Lawley deal. Nobody. Before we begin, some local history. In 1973, Sierra Vista became the first town in Arizona to elect a woman as mayor. In appreciation for the work Ethel Berger did for the community, the Ethel Berger Senior Citizen Center is named after her. Today's history was brought to you by Benson Hospital. They're doing more than treating illnesses in Benson, they're building a healthier community. Benson Hospital donated rescue inhalers to Cochise County Schools to help keep kids healthy and out of the ER. To learn more, visit their website at bensonhospital.org. Now, our feature story. A coupon booklet worth $6 could help change a homeless person's life. At least, that's what some city officials are hoping for. The coupon booklet, or vouchers, are known as better bucks, and each one, though valued at only $1, can help bring about some significant change. That's because instead of giving a homeless person money that could in turn be used to buy something that's not in that individual's best interest, narcotics, alcohol, drug paraphernalia, better bucks may only be used to purchase food, toiletries, and other essentials. And while the creators of this program, Flagstaff Police Department and the Shadows Foundation, say a coupon booklet probably can't cure someone's deep-seated issues, the booklet can point the individual in the right direction to get the help he or she needs. Here's Shadows Foundation founder and president Vicki Burton explaining the program. It's a really cool program because it addresses the need for those on the street that are in need of help. So if you know somebody that's standing out there and they're asking for help, you can give them a Better Bucks voucher and they can use that at one of the participating merchants in our Flagstaff area instead of using cash. And they can use these vouchers to purchase non-alcoholic and non-tobacco related items. So it's a really, really cool program and it's a great way to give and address those that are in need and know that the money that you're giving them is going to what you want it to go for. Sierra Vista Police Corporal Scott Borgstadt has been researching the Better Bucks program for the last several months. He also met with Flagstaff officials and hopes that Better Bucks soon will become a reality here. Borgstadt and Police Chief Adam Thrasher agree that it could help alleviate the city's panhandling situation, which has elicited complaints from citizens. So here's how it would work. Each Better Buck is worth just that, a buck. The bucks come in booklets of five. The booklet costs $6, with $1 going towards printing and administrative costs. Once the coupon or voucher booklets are produced and become available at different locations throughout the city, they can be purchased by the public, and people can give them to a needy person instead of handing them cash. Various businesses and grocery stores can sign up to participate in the program and accept the Better Bucks from a patron, and businesses that participate in the program would be reimbursed by the local nonprofit organization that runs the program. While Sierra Vista's plan is in the early, early stages, according to Mayor Rick Mueller, city officials hope it's a plan that takes off. Borgstadt says he believes the applications with the requirements for any nonprofit interested in running Sierra Vista's Better Bucks could be ready by the first part of January. He also said he thinks the program can only do good in Sierra Vista, saying that, quote, no one can find a downside to this. It's a win-win for everyone. We also want to take a moment today to recognize athletes in our community, brought to you by Apex Network Physical Therapy. Providing physical therapy to the community, Apex Network offers a wide range of services, including manual therapy, industrial rehab, dry needling, golf rehab, and more. To learn more, go to apexnetworkpt.com. A top senior and top junior on the Wilcox Varsity soccer team gave the Cowboys every opportunity to make the playoffs before they were denied at the end. Wilcox finished as the number 9 team in the 2A power ranking system that sends the top 8 to state. They had tied Bisbee for first in the region in a system that breaks ties based on who you avoid losing to. 
Head coach Juan Rodriguez thought, quote, They should have given us a tiebreaker game against Bisbee, and then I would have been more comfortable with this system. That seems more fair to me. Senior defender Victor Marquez is one of the best defenders in the league, according to Rodriguez, and though he may not have another high school game in his future, he's hoping for a chance at a college career. Junior Francisco Felix felt similarly, and said that, quote, It's tough to not go to the playoffs after working really hard at practice and at school. But he'll get another shot next year when the young team should have a good chance. Finally, we'd like to take a moment today to remember the life of Lee Wood, who was the fourth of five sons born to Albert and Mary Wood in Oscuro, New Mexico. The family moved to Hereford, Arizona a few years later. Lee spent the rest of his life in the Hereford and Bisbee area. He was a cowboy. He took time to serve his country in the United States Navy and also spent some time working in the mines of Bisbee for Phelps Dodge. Lee got back to his cowboy life as soon as he could, and did that for the rest of his life. He is survived by his wife of 62 years, Donna Wood, his daughters, his grandson, his four great-grandchildren, his brother, and a large extended family. He was preceded in death by his grandson, Chase Clemson. Over the years, many people called the Wood Place home. He will be missed, but never forgotten. Thank you for taking a moment today to remember and celebrate his life. Thanks for tuning in to the Herald Review podcast today. Join us again next week. And remember, the Herald Review is here for you with local news you can trust. For more information on any of the stories you heard about today, visit us at myheraldreview.com. Right now, you can become a member starting at just $1.99 per week.